right? And this is why there's a huge drop off in that first year in the real estate, especially full selling business and the flipping business. You know, that's really what we like to try to do here at RI Tip is, is build businesses that are, are truly businesses, right? Not just sales machines. I think it's a really big misconception in this whole, whole especially the wholesaling world, right? Um, you know, you have you have a decision to make when you get started in this business. You have a decision to make as you grow your business on on if you are a sales machine, right, or if you're a real estate company. I want to give this analogy just to make people make sure you guys understand is that you're not building sales organizations, right? And even in a wholesaling, big wholesaling operation, um, you want to avoid building this sales organization where all you're doing is trying to generate as many leads as possible and close as many deals as quickly as possible. And not saying you don't want to do those two fundamentals, but that's the idea. That's the only two fundamentals that most sales organizations have is like, I want to bring in as many leads as I can. I want to close as many deals as I can. And that's all I live off of. But you're playing a game of catch up all the fucking time. You're always trying to make sure you cover the previous month's overhead, which is business in general, right? But you want a little bit more predictability than that. And here's what I'll tell you about a sales machine. It's just like um, solar is a really hot sales business right now, right? Going and just selling as many homeowners as you can and put the solars on the roof and make that cash. Sales machines have a half-life um, in the sense that they're really quick initially. You can rack in a lot of cash initially, but if you aren't careful, you can suck up the honey hole quicker than what you mean to. Right. And so what I mean by that is that if uh, let me give you an example, if you had one street in your market and you said, OK, that one street is the only street that I can market to. And uh, right away, when you do your first marketing, you're probably going to pull out. Let's just say you pull out one or two deals. Right. You pull them out initially. Like, oh, I'm going to crush this street. I just got two deals in my first week. It's very unrealistic that you're going to get another two deals the next week because you already spoke to all the owners. Right. You already spoke to everybody um, last week. Right. And those people said they don't want to sell. Are they going to want to sell in the difference between the one week? No. Are they going to want to sell maybe in six months or seven months or eight months or nine months from now? Yeah, probably it might be one or two. Um, but in order to make sure you do it the right way, it takes about nine months like to really dial it in and in, in a specific market to say, hey, I've called through most of that data. I've, you know, I've texted through most of that data. Now I'm on a long-term direct mail campaign on a, a majority of that data and I'm doing deep dives and I'm doing these other things to pull in consistent revenue. And so a lot of businesses get super, they get messed up because you start, you start your marketing campaign and you do a lot of deals in that first two, three, four, five, six months, and then it tapers off and you think there's a problem and it's not a problem. It's, it's that your business is stabilizing. And now you have to understand how a business owner runs a business long term rather than in the short term, right? And this is why there's a huge drop off in that first year in the real estate, especially wholesaling business and the flipping business, you know, because there's a huge drop off there. In the residential business, you don't have this. Why? Because in residential, there's a percentage for the for the county or a percentage for the city. There's this many percentage that's always listing and selling. It stays that way. It's parallel. There's some fluctuations. Right. But never forget this. A residential agent can focus on one singular community and live their whole life as a real estate agent, making six figures a year off of that one single community. Most agents only make, you know, between 40 and 60,000 a year. Right. But depending on the, the location you're focusing on, your market and so on and so forth, right, you can focus on one little niche and dominate it. And they literally live 60, 70 years as an agent, whatever it is, 40, 50 years right? In that one area. We all know the agent in our local market. Usually they're the ones that put the 4th of July, you know, signs and buy our mailbox every 4th of July. They're the ones that send us magnets every single year. Like they literally dominate. Every neighbor knows that that's the agent that focuses on that little market, right? Um, usually there's some billboards outside that market that are similar to them, right? There's that standardization uh, across the board. And so as you build a business in, in the you know, investment world, Right. You want to focus on the same kind of authority uh, and, and you don't have to necessarily go out and build a sales organization that's always smashing, you know, um, and creating a massive amount of overhead. But you can if you like. But if you're going to do that, you got to do it the right way. You got to track the results. You got to, you know, update the data. You got to do all the things that are needed to do. That way you have the intelligence, because the only way that you can get after you go the six, seven, eight, nine months or maybe it's two years from now. Before you tap out and you have that 
decline, the only way that you can get yourself out of it without spending a shit ton of money at hopping into a new market and forcing it, right? Uh, I talk about this now when I give talks on stage and whatnot, the immune system of your business, right? Our, our immune system in business is cash, right? And we can manipulate our immune system by injecting more cash. And right, so if we have a dip, right, we can put into our honey hole, throw some of that cash on the fire, and we can force feed a result, right? Cash fixes all things in business until you don't have enough cash to fix the problem, right? And so you want to avoid that from ever being the case. And so um, at any rate, the uh, the way that we do that is track the results because the only list, the only list that you cannot buy, period, flat out doesn't exist, is the list that is the result of your marketing right? It is the best list that you could ever have. It's the most lucrative list. It's the list that no other investor has. It's the list that's unique to you. It's the AI generated list that you, that, that your business produced. There's people spending 30, 40, 50,000 a year on AI generated fucking lists, but their business literally produces it every single day as you market and you don't pay attention to it. Okay. So I'm not saying that those lists won't give results, but I'm saying that the fucking list that you, that the data that you're producing from marketing is giving you better results if you would use it. I'm gonna give you some free money. I'm gonna remove all excuses that you have on why you can't get started in REI SIF by actually giving you money to start at here at REI SIF. Using this coupon code, you'll get $25 to use for skip tracing, direct mail, and whatever else you want. And I'm gonna go even further and let you know that when you sign up, if you go ahead and message support, you might even be able to get yourself a little bit of data in there as well. But just know that it's way more data than you would need in order to get your first deal, your second deal, or even just get a few more deals inside your business, especially when it's free. Use this coupon code, go sign up for a trial and continue watching our content and learn more about how to be awesome at sales and marketing in real estate.